Okay, well, I've been asked to tonight. I'm sorry, first, uh, this is in English. <laughs> <laughs> but I have written some Korean on the, uh, on the slides, some of the more difficult phrases. Um, so hopefully, if your English isn't really, really high level, at least I've tried to help you with the slides. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for inviting me here tonight. Um, I've been a fan of TED um, for a long time, so it's a, a privilege to be here tonight uh, talking to you, and I hope what I'm going to talk about will, you will find useful either now, because I heard some of you are looking for work, so perhaps I can help you tonight. Uh, some of you may be looking for work in the future, so who knows? I hope I can help you, uh, all of you, uh, in some way through this visual resume. So, <coughs> Did you? <laughs> ah, I see. So, thank you. See, there you go. I'm putting some Korean in there. For thank you, but not just a, a normal thank you, a very big thank you for allowing me to come here. <laughs> um, so, who am I? What is my background? <laughs> that didn't work. We have a font issue. Um, well, I come from a place over here in the United Kingdom called Leeds, and I don't like Manchester. I'm going to confess now, I do not like Manchester. Leeds is over here on the east, Manchester is over there on the west, and it's a little bit like Kyongsangdo and Tolado. <laughs> we don't really like each other. So I know Pak Chi Song is a great soccer player, I know, but he plays for the wrong team. <laughs> Um, so my hometown is Leeds, and it's the fourth largest city in the United Kingdom. Uh, I went to Leeds Metropolitan University, which is actually very famous for sport, um, although I didn't do sport there. Uh, I studied law at uh, Leeds Metropolitan University. Uh, this video clip, which is Creative Commons license, it's perfectly okay, um, <laughs> um, is a video of Leeds Rhinos, who's my favorite rugby team. Uh, they were world champions, world club champions last year. Um, but in 2002, I decided to leave Leeds and fly over to this country over here on the east, to, to Seoul. And I've been working for a language institute in Songpagu and Gangnam. And I'm the <laughs> academic director now for this language institute. And I also have my own company uh, dealing with international communication. Uh, this is the area that I live in. I, I live in... Uh, you see, now that one worked. I live in uh, Sakchondong, um, so I'm very lucky. I'm surrounded by beautiful scenery. Um, we have uh, Olympic Park not far away. And just like most foreigners in Korea, we love Samgyeopsal. <laughs> it's one of Korea's secrets. I, I don't know why we don't have it in other countries. You really have to go looking for it. Um, so I've been teaching business English for seven years. Uh, I'm, uh, I've told you that bit. My hobbies. Well, I love photography. And we have a group um, that does photo walking, which is basically two hours, group of photographers. We just go out and we just take pictures. And then afterwards, we find a bar and we all look at each other's pictures and go, wow, look, ooh, and then upload it to a Flickr site. Um, Really good fun. Uh, I also like running, and next month I hopefully be ready to run in a half, half marathon, not the full marathon. So tonight I'm here to talk to you about the, the what, the why, the how of visual resumes. Um, I'm not going to admit that I am the pioneer uh, or founder of visual resumes. Uh, I found a visual resume on a website called slideshare.net. Uh, great website for ideas for if any of you looking for presentation design. Uh, it's a great place to get some good ideas. And I came across a visual resume and I thought, wow, now that's a good idea. So, some of you may not know, but what is a visual resume? Essentially, a visual resume is your life story in pictures. And I posted my visual resume on uh, slide, slideshare.net. And I kind of tell my story, so great English teacher, 
I teach English here. I've lived in Seoul since 2002, but I originally come from here. And if you look at the way the slides follow, it, it kind of tells a story. Um, so I graduated with police. I worked in one of these until it made me uh, ask me, why, why am I doing this? So I got on one of these, came to Korea. I fell in love with Korea, so I stayed. So it kind of tells a story as you go along. So why do you need one? Well, the traditional resume, if you think about it, hasn't actually changed for over 50 years. It's... Thank you. <laughs> hasn't actually changed for over 50 years. You have a profile, who are you, um, your experience, your education, uh, your, your skills, hobbies, um, and references. Well, I was at school a long time ago. And when I was at high school, my teachers taught me this. And I think, well, that's 20 years ago. And, so, and my mother and father, they also wrote their resumes this way. So I started looking around, and, <clears throat> and we live in this digital age now. <clears throat> if you buy a camera, it's really, really difficult to buy a film camera now. Everything's digital. All your pictures are on a computer or hard drive. Um, so we live in this 21st century, but our resumes are still in the 19th century. And I think it's time for us to move this forward ourselves. There is no law, there's no rules that says a resume has to look like this. There's nothing that tells you it has to look like this. Usually if a company wants you to have a format, they give you a, please complete this form. Your resume is for you to decide. It's your little creative place where you can have a go. And we are all unique and different. Every single one of us has different backgrounds, different hobbies. And I think surely we are worth more than this kind of piece of paper. We must be worth more than this. And when I look, I, <laughs> my job as a director of academic, um, I have to interview teachers. I have to employ teachers. This morning, I got two. I got these at 8 o'clock this morning. It's nearly 9 p.m. I still haven't looked at it. I have no incentive. I've got no... I need a new teacher. <laughs> but this does not inspire me. Um, it's... Ugh, to be honest. And when I see these resumes, I think, who are you? They're like, you are faceless. I don't know you. Um, but a visual resume, you've got like, hi, this is me. I used to work with her. This is me. I mean, this, this is a fantastic opening picture. I'm going to read this person's resume. And we live in the world of social media, of, of well, in Korea, Sci World. In, I think many of you probably also have Facebook. Um, I certainly have. We have Facebook. We can take all this social media and take advantage of it and really make it work for ourselves and your futures. And something else, I, I, I read this book while I was on vacation. I've just come back from my vacation. I don't know if you've ever heard of this book. Um, it's got a great website with it, with lots of free resources. And Dr. John Medina says, vision trumps all other senses. So you've got smell, you've got hearing, taste, touch, but vision is the one thing your brain trusts. So within seconds, I should have translated this, but it's a bit scientific. Within seconds on exposure, pictures beat sentences and words for recall. And when you send your resume in, you have to ask yourself, what is going to make you memorable? How is the human resources person going to remember you? And Korea has probably the most competitive job market out there today. And it's really, really tough in Korea. Really tough. And you've got many people of, particularly these days, all ages, all skills. That one worked. Um, just down here where it says different. It was originally the Apple Think Different font. It hasn't worked. So, sorry for that. Um, 
Now, if you imagine you're the human resources manager, can you imagine reading 400 of these? And I have a friend who is human resources uh, manager for a large Korean company. And he says, this summer, after the graduation in February, for one well-paid office job, they were getting 400 resumes for one job. Do you know how they sorted them out? 300 went in the trash. They just went, one, two, three, four, five, keep, one, two. <laughs> it was the only way. There's two people in the human resources office. It was the only way they could actually get it down. So 300 people, you could have gone to the best university, you could have had the best experience, but you ain't got a chance. It's like Lotto with your resume. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's going to make you feel, oh, this is human resources managers these days. Oh, give me coffee. <laughs> Young. Um, has anyone heard of Seth Godin? Have anyone ever heard of Seth Godin? Seth Godin is a, for those of you who don't know, he's an amazing marketing guru. I love the guy. He looks a bit strange. <laughs> I've got slightly more hair than him. <laughs> um, and he's a Tedster. He, he's spoken at Ted a couple of times. And he wrote a book about purple, ca purple cow. And basically, the purple cow, cow idea is... Most cows are black and white, and if you're driving in the countryside, particularly in Europe, uh, where he got the idea from the book, you will see cows that are black and white. And for children growing up in the city, they don't see them very often. They go, wow, look at those cows. But after a few miles, like, silence. It's just a cow. It's just a cow. <laughs> and then it, Seth Godin began thinking, he said, what happens if the next field had a purple cow? They'd be like, whoa, stop the car, cameras out, video camera, calling newspapers. It's like, whoa, this is special. And when you send your resume in, you need to think like that. What's going to make them go, whoa, to rush to the CEO and say, look, look, we've got to have this person. And I think perhaps these visual resumes is the way of doing it. So how do you make one? See, I can see it all in your eyes. How do I make one? The first thing you need to do is you need to take some time out to think about your life. Think about your message, your story. You need to think about your university, your hobbies, I'm translating here, um, your experience, your skills, and your interests. The next thing, and this actually comes from Presentation Zen, plan it on paper. Um, I... Before reading presentations then, I admit that I was one of those people who went straight to the computer to start doing my presentation. And I tried the, he calls it the analog approach, writing, drawings, getting some ideas. It's much, much easier. You can put the story together. It really, really does work. And that's it. The secret is tell your story. When should you do it? Um, I'm one of these people who thinks, well, now, don't wait. If you feel a little bit of encouragement and inspiration, have a go. Start playing. You know, those of you working now probably have plenty of time. Those of you looking for a job, now's a good time to have a go. Have a go. Um, we have an expression in English which says, time waits for no one. So you can sit at home and thinking, that's a good idea. I'll do that one day. My experience, one day never happens. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But no, one day. One day never happens. So I do it now. It's a really, really good idea. But as with everything and as with design, there are some like, maybe I shouldn't call it the rules. I probably should call it guideline. Guideline rather than rules. But you don't want to be boring people. So I would say set yourself a limit of 25 slides. Use pictures, and pictures from your life. Um, I will give you some ideas for um, other places where you can get pictures from later. Use as little text as possible. Um, an expression in English is, a picture paints a thousand words. And 
when you're looking at uh, images, there's a lot of information there, more than words can express. <coughs> and if you look at my particular resume, we have um, a lot of pictures in there, very, very little words. Um, it's more visual than it is words. Be creative. Create your own style. Um, that's one of the most important things. If all visual resumes end up looking the same, then we're back where we are today with the written uh, resume. So create your own style. Um, I noticed that many of you are using Apple computers. It looks like Apple Paradise in here. <laughs> and I am looking at this cube with envy. Ah, but I know the design fault. I know the design fault. Um, so most of you are probably using Keynote. And you have an advantage using Keynote because Keynote has different slides and templates to PowerPoint. So if you do a presentation in a company, you are already going to look different. So if you design your, your resume using Keynote, already you're looking different from other people. But we do need people to use PowerPoint as well because the more different visual resumes out there, the more exciting this will be. One of the things I would always point out is use pictures of yourself. Um, I do love photography. Uh, I have a great Korean friend um, called Mark, and I call him paparazzi, <laughs> because when we do our photo walks, he never takes pictures of the objects. He just takes pictures of people. And you're there, and you're lining up, and you can oh, man. He's always there taking pictures, taking pictures. Source of inspiration. Where can you get ideas from? Um, and Mr. John was talking about, uh, we had presentations then. That's one of the places where I got a lot of my inspiration from for doing this kind of uh, visual resume. Slideshare.net, as I mentioned. Seth Godin's book on uh, purple cow. Purple milk. Uh, <laughs> a book which, uh, I don't know if it's quite well known in Korea, but a book by uh, a, guy, a lady called Nancy Duarte. Um, just a little bit, Duarte Design uh, have a lot to do with uh, Steve Jobs' keynote presentations. They do a lot of work with him, or have done in the past. Um, she wrote a book, Slideology, great place for inspiration. And all around you here in Korea, I mean, these two pictures I got in Insadong. I mean, Insadong is a really inspiring place for images. Now, according to this computer, I have about 15 seconds left, if it's correct. So what can we do? Well, the more people who get involved and the more people who make them, we can spread the word. And this whole idea of TED, if you look at the, the logo of TED, ideas worth spreading. And I personally think this is an idea that's worth spreading. And as a person who employs people, trust me, I'm not going to think you're stupid. If you say, I'm going to thank you for sending me a visual resume, because the traditional resume is killing me. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Sorry. That's it.